This is the Mosh Pit Backstage Podcast for punk, metal and rock interviews and segments. The Stranger is a progressive metal band from Brisbane formed in 2013 with their self-titled debut LP coming out on the 21st of April. On the line, I have Kellen and Daniel from The Stranger. Welcome to the show and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having having us. No worries. So tell us about your debut album coming out in April. What was the creative process when writing and recording it? Yeah, sure. Um, This album is... Uh, the culmination of a few years of work. Um, basically, the, there's a little bit of a backstory, which is that um, Daniel and myself used to be in a band called Alpine Fault, and Alpine Fault broke up in 2013, same way, year we got The Stranger started. Um, and basically, uh, I had a bunch of music that I'd written for the next, uh, what was going to be the next Alpine Fault album, and obviously that fell through, and Daniel and I didn't want to stop making music. You know, we this is what we want to do. So mm. we formed The Stranger, and so we had, you know, a, a couple of tracks already written to kind of uh, form the basis of what it was going to be. We sort of approached it differently, though. Uh, Alpine Fault was uh, already an established band that we joined, and whereas The Stranger was very much our baby. Um, mm. So the, the process is really just... It's one of those things where we'll just jam stuff out until it comes to us or, you know, one of us will sit down with our computer late at night and noodle around and hopefully something cool pops out and when it does, you just got to follow it, you know. But, um, mm. yeah, so we, we spent the last, uh, the last few years kind of refining all the songs um, down and I guess what we wanted was initially um, an album that would sort of showcase all the different stuff that we do um, and, you know, all the different styles. and Because uh, we're really big fans of so many different kinds of music, and so um, yeah. we wanted we wanted the songs to sort of... Um, to, we wanted that to come across in the music. So um, the, the songs that we've ended up with is, for this album are, are pretty broad as far as the, um, the, the stylistic choices go. Yeah. Do you find it hard when you're starting a band to sort of find new members and get the band up and going? Uh, yeah, it... It's actually pretty much the hardest part <laughs> of starting a band. It's, uh, you know, because the music's always going to be there and it's always going to happen, but finding people that not only do you get along with on a personal level and can hang out with for hours and hours at a time without, you know, either getting bored of each other or killing each other, um, mm. but also having them, you know, sort of be up to the level of skill that you need and also have them be on the same wavelength as far as the actual music goes you know, it's it's tricky, and uh, really, I think we were sort of lucky in the beginning because we had some songs already written. It wasn't a case of, oh, hey, we want to start something that maybe kind of sounds like this. Uh, we actually already had something ready to go that we could show yeah. that people could listen to, and I think, you know, having that makes things a lot easier. But, yeah, it's definitely the hardest part of the whole thing I reckon Mm. and I was also wondering how many tracks does the new album have on it Uh, it's got uh, 10 tracks on it two of those tracks are more more so uh, acoustic pieces I suppose Um, they kind of feature our softer side Okay, and you had a single come out late last year called Divine Intervention, which I feel has a sort of operatic theme to it in, a, in like a sense with the duet. So I was wondering where did the inspiration for the theme of the song and the duet come from? Yeah, um, well, uh, the, the, I guess the lyrical themes, Tom, our singer, came up with that. He's a, well, look, we're all pretty big nerds at the end of the day. Um, oh, yeah. We're all really into um, gaming and pop culture and all that sort of stuff. And uh, Tom is a... Uh, is a big World of Warcraft fan. Okay. <laughs> so that song actually ended up being um, based around some lore from the Warcraft universe. Okay, um, cool. Yeah, and I mean, the, the, the music was written well before the lyrics, and, you know, the music itself really called for something very sort of grand in its scale, and so, you know, he kind of picked that topic to go from. As far as the duet, um, we... Uh, I think 
it was sort of just a combination of one wanting to have some female vocals somewhere on the album just because I think it's, you know, the, the harmonising of a male and female voice in, in the sort of metal setting works really nicely. It's something I've always liked. Mm-hmm. Um, but also we were playing around with melodies for the chorus for ages and I remember there was this period where we sort of had an idea but nothing really seemed to stick very well until we had the idea of actually singing one of the melody lines an octave above and having a, a girl do it as opposed to trying to just harmonize two male voices yeah and it was this, it was a real sort of aha moment because um we were playing around with it and it was just exactly right so yeah that's where that came from Awesome. So on your Facebook page, it says that The Stranger was formed with the goal of exploring musical expression by leaving no musical stone unturned, right? So I was just wondering how that ex- expedition is going. Um, yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Um, I mean, I think at the end of the day, we'll always be sort of, you know, a rock or metal band at the core. Yeah. But, you know, uh, we all listen to such a really diverse range of music. So, you know, uh Personally, I grew up listening to Dire Straits and Enya and Keith Urban and a bunch of Celtic and folk artists that probably aren't very well known. And I know um, our other guitarist, Drew, is the same. He's come from a very folk background. Our, um, our bassist, too, is actually leaving soon, which is, which is a shame, has a, um, a much more kind of jazzy influence background and everything. Yeah. And um, Daniel here brings the metal. <laughs> I, I feel like if we were to, you know, just do the the metal or the rock thing only, I think we'd all probably start to feel very, um, what's the word I'm looking for here, uh, unfulfilled as musicians because there's such a broad world out there. Yeah. And um, that all that being said, the problem is that uh, inspiration doesn't just sort of come when you want it to come and you can't, I can't really sit down and go I'm going to write a Celtic thing today it's very much just a case of whatever we seem to be doing or whatever instrument I've got in my hands or whatever that sort of fa- that uh, forms the basis of that and um, but once you've kind of hooked into a theme of inspiration you can sort of follow that so we've got, we've got a lot more that we want to we want to try out there's um there's certain things that we want to go more deeply into and explore, you know, things like the funk aspect, like we've got some funky stuff in our music that we really like. Yeah. And I think we'd like to pursue that more deeply. But, um, yeah, no, it's, it's going well. And just know, uh, I mean, just knowing that we have that musical freedom and that no one's expecting us to only do one thing or we'll be disappointed if we explore other things is really freeing. It's great. Mm, yeah, and your musical influences are listed on Facebook as Opeth, Proofry, Caligula's Horse and Meshuggah, amongst others. So I was wondering, how does it feel to play alongside bands such as Caligula's Horse, who you've been a fan of and looked up to enough that they inspire your sound? It's really, really cool. They're, um, they are, fr- yeah, I mean, we're all Brisbane bands. They're obviously doing insanely well. Um, you know, they're off during... Or well, they they went and did a Europe tour and now they've just toured around Australia with Opeth and all that sort of stuff. So mm-hmm. they're doing really really well. Um, but they've uh, we know them personally and they've been really supportive of us. Uh, the singer Jim has actually plugged us a fair bit. Um, so uh, and yeah, I mean, I do really look up to them as musicians and songwriters and everything. So knowing that they know us and like our stuff as well is it's very very cool. Very yeah. humbling. Though. And I love the music video to the whip. And I was interested to hear that it was done in one take. So I was wondering whose idea was that? That was uh, actually Adrian's idea. So the, the guy who filmed it, we yeah. sort of had this idea to, like, you know, just film us playing just somewhere that looked particularly interesting to the eye, you know, along with us playing. Yeah. And he sort of said, hey, you know, why don't we sort out some choreography and, um, you know, sort of film it using a drone and do it all in one take. And we thought that was a really unique idea and jumped at the opportunity to do something a bit different. We, we were out there from about, uh, uh, I'd say, 10 till 10 a.m. till about 5 p.m. out in uh, Mount Tambourine on a blistering hot day uh, filming this music video, <laughs> trying to keep, keeping ourselves uh, under umbrellas as much as possible. But... Um, it, it was it was a lot of fun, and you know Adrian then had the uh, the idea to put on some really really cool visual effects yeah. um, surrounding that, and what he came back with was you know pretty much what we just released, 
and we're absolutely stoked with the way it came out. And you know, we all performed fantastically. <laughs> if we do, <laughs> if we do so, 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 I mean, on the day, like you know, we 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 put in a, a lot of lot of hard work with. Uh, you know, head banging and all that. Yeah, the choreography took quite a few hours to get right, and by the time that we actually put on our, you know, nicer clothes, we were already buggered and sweating and everything. So it was, it was a lot of work. But what I really like is um, with all the visual effects that he added to it, it kind of takes it from being, uh, even if it, it was just the one take thing, which is sort of unique in itself, it still takes it from being just a band playing like a standard film clip to a little bit sort of tongue in cheek. And a little bit, a little bit over the top, but in a fun way. Mm -hmm. And I really like that because I feel like that represents, you know, one of the cornerstones of our our whole thing is that we don't really want to take ourselves too seriously. You know, I don't, I don't think we'll ever be that dark and brooding band that you know is glowering down at the camera. That's not really us. And so I feel like the the, the fun aspect of the film clip sort of uh, reflects that. Mm. Yeah, I really think it turned out really well. I really liked it. It's interesting to hear that it was actually filmed with a drone because, like, the shots were like it's going around the band. I was actually interested. I'm thinking, I wonder how they got, like, a cameraman to be, like, running around the whole time. But Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, um, just to clarify there, he, he was actually holding it for a lot of it. Oh, um, yeah. like, a handle underneath. So, yeah, there was oh. some of it was drone work, but some of it was handheld, yeah. Oh, that's, that's so cool, though. Yeah, it turned out really well. well thank you. Yeah, no worries. And I was also wondering... Um, um, if you have any idea of yet of when you're going to tour for the album, yeah. So that's what we're um, we're currently in the process of sorting that out. Um, at this stage, it's looking like sort of more towards the middle of the year, sort okay. of uh, hopefully around late April or May. Okay. Um, we've we're actually we're in conversation with um, a few people today actually about that. So uh, we'll as soon as that's organised, it'll be on a fa on our Facebook page. Awesome. Well, we'll keep that updated. And thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure having you on the show, and we wish you all the best for your album release and when the tour happens. Thank you so much. It's been nice talking to you. Thanks for listening to the Mosh Pit Backstage Podcast. You can subscribe to us on iTunes and Omni. To find out more about the show, go to www.syn.org.au slash moshpit. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash moshpitonsin and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at moshpitsin. The regular Mosh Pit radio show broadcasts punk, rock and male tunes and interviews every Thursday nights on Sin 9.7 on FM and digital radios. Listeners outside of Melbourne, Australia can stream Sin 9.7 online at www.syn.org.au. Thanks to Vintage Ruin for the music. Hi, this is Tomato from Flash God Apocalypse. Hi, I'm Enid from Girls Go. I am Phoebe Pinnock from Heaven the Axe. Hey, this is Gary Oldman from Misfits. Hey, this is Kat Sproul from Horizon Edge, and you're listening to The Moss Pit on Sin FM. Hi, this is Aina from Leopard. Hi, I'm Virginia Lilly from the band Lilly. This is Raoul from 1449. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ali from Eberhead. Hey everybody, this is Charlie Benante with Anthrax, and you are listening to the Mosh Pit on Sims.